Good day, good people. My name is Gabo Sekwele and I am an online math tutor here to help young children turn their struggles into their successes. In today's video, we are going to be talking about factorizing. This video is for kids that are struggling with factorizing or want to get a better understanding of factorizing. By the way, factorizing and factoring can be used interchangeably, so I'm going to use factorizing because that's what I use, but it's the same as factoring. Now, this is a part of math that is taught from the third grade grade up until the 12th grade and even beyond. So the reason I'm doing this video today, especially for these high school kids that struggle with factorizing, I want you to understand what factorizing is and what you're actually doing. It's harder to do something when you don't understand it. So this video is going to help you understand factorizing, where it comes from, how it works and why it works the way it works. So firstly, what does it mean to factorize? When a person factorizes a value, they are showing us which two numbers can be multiplied to get that value. So let's say I have the number 10. Which two numbers can you multiply to get the number 10. You have 2 and 5. When you multiply those two together, you can get 10. You also have 1 and 10. When you multiply those two numbers together, you get 10. This exercise is called factorizing. And these numbers, the numbers that we just mentioned, are called the factors of the number 10. Because when you factorize, you show us what are the factors of 10. What are the numbers that can get you to 10 when you multiply them. Now, factorizing can get more complicated the bigger the number gets. For example, factorizing the number 256 is not as easy as factoring the number 10, but it even gets more complicated when you have to factorize a sum that looks like this. This is hard because this sum has an x in it, you know, a variable, a number that we don't know the value of. So if you knew the variable, if you knew what x was equal to, this would be much easier because then you would put that number or that value you in place of x and then you could solve this whole sum then you could find the factors of whatever number you come up with so for example let's say the value of that x is 4 let's say that x is actually equal to 4 that means you would put the 4 in place of all the x's in the sum then once you've done that you would solve the sum and your answer would be equal to 43 now you can factorize with ease because you have a number that you can factorize so that's easy However, in this case, we don't know the value of x. We don't know what x is actually equal to. Therefore, we don't have a number that we can factorize. So now you have to factorize the entire sum with the variable in it. So that might prove to be a bit of a challenge. So in other words, what we need to do is find two factors that will equal to this exact sum, exactly the way it looks, with the variables and everything in it. Exactly the same thing we did to the 10. We found factors of 10. We're going to find the factors of this exact sum. Now, there are a few methods that you can use to factorize sums that have variables. There's a method called grouping, another method that is used to factorize difference of squares. That's also a type of sum. Another type of sum is difference of cubes. Um, there's a method that you can use to factorize that type of sum. You can consider these methods as tools that you can use to factorize. And you know how certain tools only work to solve certain problems? The tool that you would use to factorize a difference of squares is not the same tool that you would use to factorize a sum that looks like this, a quadratic function. And the method that is used to factorize a difference of squares will not work to factorize a difference of cubes. Different tools work for different problems. So you need to know which tool to use depending on the types of problems that you will be faced with, depending on the different sums that you will have. But now let's look at a tool that you will be using a lot. Many times you will find yourself factorizing quadratic sums. So let's discuss the tool, the method, that you will be using to factorize this type of sum. But to help you understand this method. I'm going to start off by taking the factors of a quadratic sum and multiplying them together. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. So here are the two factors that we are going to multiply together. Now the same way we had the factors of 10 as 5 and 2, these two factors are factors of something. In the same way we multiply 2 and 5 to get 10, we are going to multiply these two factors and we're going to see what we get. So to make this easy for me to explain, I'm going to label all these terms, basically all the numbers in the brackets. In the first bracket, we have term 1 and term 2, and in the second bracket, we have term 3 and term 4. Now, to multiply these brackets together, we need to multiply term 1 and term 3. This will give us our answer, x to the power of 2. Then we need to multiply term 1 and term 4. 
which will give us the second term in our answer, negative x. Next, we're going to multiply term 2 and term 3. This will give us a positive 4x as the third term in our answer. Lastly, you need to multiply term 2 and term 4, which will give you negative 4 as the last term in our answer. All that's now left for you to do is to simplify this sum. And you do that by adding negative x and 4x, which will give you 3x as an answer. And you will be left to write down negative 4. Once you've simplified, your final answer will be x to the power of 2 plus 3x minus 4. That means when you multiplied those two factors together, those two brackets together, you got x squared plus 3x minus 4 as our answer. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because to go from this quadratic function to your factors, you are going to do the reverse of this process that we just did. That's really what the method is. It's literally just a reversal of this exact process that we've done. So to prove that to you, I'm going to put these two methods side by side, showing you the steps of each method so that you can see that to find the factors of a quadratic function, it is a reversal of multiplying the factors of a quadratic function. So let's factorize x squared plus 3x minus 4. Your first step should be to draw two brackets that will house the factors. Now let's start with the factorizing. You're going to start by factorizing the first term x squared into its two factors x and x. So we're going to put the first x into the first bracket and the second x into the second bracket. In the first process we did we multiplied the two x's together and we got x squared or x to the power of 2. But now that we're factorizing we are now breaking up the x squared into its two factors x and x. So it's clear to see that it is just a reversal of the first step that we did in the first method. Now you have x in one bracket and x in the other bracket. So now let's move on to the next term, 3x. Now to see this properly, we are going to go back to the first method when we multiplied the two brackets together. Let's look at that for a second. If you can remember correctly, to get 3x, we needed to add negative x onto 4x. That gave us... 3x. So now we have to do the reverse. We need to find numbers that will add up to 3x that we can put into the brackets. But there is a catch with this. The numbers you choose must be factors of the last term. In this case, negative 4. Why? Well, remember in the first method where we multiplied the two brackets together, we had to multiply term 2 and term 4 to get the last term in our final answer. So we multiplied positive 4 and negative 1. That gave us negative 4. So term 2 and term 4 were factors of negative 4, which was the last term in our answer. However, to get 3x, we multiplied term 1 and term 4, which gave us negative x. And we also multiplied term 2 and term 3, which gave us 4x. We then had to add those two terms, and that gave us 3x. So term 2 and term 4 in the brackets created both the second and the third term in our final answer, that being 3x and negative 4. That is the second and the third term. So going back to the factorizing, this is why the numbers that must go into our brackets must be able to create both terms, 3x and negative 4. In other words, when we add them up, must give us 3x, but also when we multiply them, they must give us negative 4. So we now need to think which values are both factors of negative 4 but also add up to 3. Those values are negative 1 and positive 4. Now just like we discussed, it's a complete reversal of the process that we did before. So essentially, that then gives us the two brackets that when we multiply them together should give us x to the power of 2 plus 3x minus 4. When you think about it clearly, we broke down each and every term in this quadratic function. We broke down the x squared, we broke down the 3x, and we broke down the negative 4. When we broke them down, we got x plus 4 and x minus 1, which are the two factors. This is a complete reversal of the first process. In the first process, we brought everything together. We multiplied all the terms together, which is why, as you can see, these two processes are just the opposites, the reverse of one another. So that's literally what that whole method is all about. It's just a reversal of the more logical, the more sensible 
process. The first process makes sense because you're simply multiplying the first bracket with the second bracket. It's the same like, you know, earlier on in the video when we had 5 and 2 and we multiplied them to get 10. That's exactly what you're doing in this case. You're multiplying these two factors and it gave you that big sum. The second process might be a bit confusing because you may wonder where does it come from. It's literally just a reversal of multiplying two factors together. So I hope after this explanation it just makes a bit more sense and you understand where they got this process from. Thank you so so much for watching this video. I really hope it helped you. It was just a little breakdown of factorizing. You know what factorizing is and where it comes from as well as the methods that you can use to factorize different types of problems. But you know if you didn't learn anything from this video the one thing that I hope you got from this video was that everything in math comes from somewhere. It wasn't just cooked up in the air. There's logic behind it and you just need to find the logic. You can find that logic by studying math the right way. And if you want to learn how to do that, I have a video all about that. I'll link it down in the description and I'll link it up in the cards. Also, if you are looking for an online math tutor for yourself or if you are a parent that is in search of a math tutor for your child, please be sure to go down to my website and schedule a free consultation with me there. Thanks once more and I'll see you in the next video.